Hello and welcome to Prosperity by the Pint. This is episode 39. 39 episodes. We're having a good time. This is the podcast where we talk about money, investing, business, and life success, all while having a cold beer. This week's episode, I want to talk about some big decision, big tips on getting ahead financially. Okay, so this isn't a little stuff you should do in your budget. This is things you should plan your life out with uh, or think about planning your life out with that are going to get you ahead financially. Um, and the beer of choice is, don't worry, Wolverines, you might be having a bad season, but that's all right. I'm drinking your beer, uh, from Wolverine state brewing company out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. I, I actively look for Michigan beers. I haven't tried in order to try them on the podcast, give the company a shout. So Wolverine state brewing company, and this is the, their premium lager. So let's have a little premium lager here. Hmm. It's very sweet for a lager. It's almost uh it's almost fruity. It's different than what I expected. I I enjoy it. I just don't know that I would call it like a a premium lager. I mean, it's not not premium. I'd call it more like a uh a sunshine lager or something. I don't know. It's very it's very fruity. It's kind of a lemon to it. But All right. So this is uh this is big a big idea, big concept kind of stuff. Uh, life changing if depending on decisions that you make. So the first is is choosing where you live um, and where you work. And so I live in the wonderful state of Michigan where the cost of living is extremely low. In fact, the third lowest cost city to live in America is Kalamazoo, and it is a lovely place. And the rent in Kalamazoo is something like uh, averaging like $800 a month. Compared to Manhattan, one bedroom apartment, probably smaller than this studio, uh, $3,100 a month. Uh, San Francisco, $3,600 a month. Um, now, I get it. There's more employment opportunities in a city of 8 million than there is in a county of 10 million. But when it comes down to it, where there are employment opportunities everywhere. And your the way in which you live your life, the, the house that you choose, the apartment that you choose have a dramatic impact on your quality of life. And I happen to live in a low cost uh, state, a low cost area where the cost of living is substantially lower, which means substantially more of my income can go to things other than the basic essentials such as housing and food, etc. Right. So now um, Texas, uh, if you don't like Michigan because you don't like, I don't know, winters that suck. Uh, Texas is a fantastic place, low, uh, low taxes. Uh, there's two cities, uh, in Texas that rank one and two as the lowest cost of living, uh, cities in America. And that is McAllen and Harlan, Harlingen in, and they average about $750 a month in rent. Um, and so that's not that far from, from California. And there's a reason that you're seeing record numbers of people actually leave California and go to States like Texas, uh, lower cost of living, lower, lower taxes, um, and, and more reasonable housing affordability where I'm living right now. You can buy pretty easily <clears throat> a three bedroom, two bath house on an acre, uh, you know, in somewhere the you know, a nicer, more updated place, $150,000, um, And so you're looking at your firstborn child, your left pinky finger, and a million dollars in, in San Francisco uh, for something like that, or not even in San Francisco, outside of San Francisco. So my point about this is <clears throat> when I hear people uh, complain, because I, I was traveling recently, I was out west, complaining about the cost of living. And it was a bartender that was doing it. And like, she didn't have any family in the area. Her and her husband met, they happened to pick there and they had no kids, no family in the area. It's like, why are you grounded here? I mean, you can bartend anywhere. Um, I, you don't need to bartend a place where, where a reasonable home is a half a million dollars, right? Like move somewhere. So where you choose to live and work, especially in the era of, of the fact that there's so many jobs that you can do remotely, um, it matters. And, and <clears throat> if you think you want to get ahead in life and you're in a place where you can, can't even afford an apartment, you got to think, rethink some life decisions there. So I, I know I have some listeners in California. I see the metrics come out. And so I, I, I can sympathize with you a little bit, but I don't feel sorry for you. Move. 
Um, I guess that's my, my, my take on that. All right. Second income streams. So a lot of people like to, to go to work, come home and do their thing, uh, do their family time, do whatever, you know, I got to tell you that that is, that's fine. But if you want to get ahead, if you not want to, if you want the little extras, if you want to not be struggling, you got to look at a second income stream. Now, whether it's rental real estate and you're just, just squirrel away some money until you can get a down payment on a, on a rental property, or whether you're running a, uh, a, a you know, a side hustle, um, whether you're doing the garage sale, Geary V hustle, whatever it is, a second income stream, other than relying on a large employer, I can't tell you how big of a difference that makes. Most of my really good clients n have never worked one thing. They're always doing multiple things. They have multiple businesses, multiple investments. Uh, they work and they have investments, uh, real estate and stock and, and whatever it may be. Uh, but, I, you know, I have an entire, I think the first episode I ever did, I talked for just five minutes straight about different side hustles and things that you could do. And when I'm talking about that, I, I mean it, I'm serious about it. I mean, I have some rental, uh, rental property that I make some income off of. Um, I have stock investments. Uh, my wife and I are dual income household. I'm constantly looking for opportunities for, for, for a second income stream. And so I, I gotta, gotta say, if you want to get ahead in life, you can't just go to work, go, come home, go to work, come home, go to work, go home. You've, you've got to incorporate another way of making money into your day-to-day -day life. Um, if you're not ready for marriage, which my generation, our generation, I'm going to take a quick beer break here. Drink some of this fruity beer. Two can live for the cost of one. That's an old saying. And that's because when, when two people live together, there's not two house payments. There's just still one house payments. There's not two insurance payments. There's one, not two utility payments, etc. You get what I'm saying? But my generation, millennials, uh, younger people are, are waiting longer to get married, which is good in a, a certain sense. We, we tend to um, have lower divorce rates. We tend to be a little bit more financially secure by the time we get married. But it, it doesn't help us necessarily financially because, like I said, two can live for the cost of one. So if you're not ready to get married, get a roommate. I mean, I get it if you went through college or you went through your early 20s and you had roommates and you're just ready to live on your own, but now you're 35 years old and you're not married. Dude, rent out a room in your house. If you got a house, rent out, buy, get a two bedroom apartment, and rent something, some of it out. The things that you were frustrated about at having roommates at 22, the constant partying and people sleeping over and messiness is not necessarily the case when you're 35 years old. Get a damn roommate, start collecting five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars a month for renting out your space. I mean, I get it, you want your privacy, but is it worth being behind financially for the rest of your life, right? Suck it up for five years, save some money, and give yourself an opportunity to do something different, do something more. So think about it, get a roommate. Um, I have actually, my wife and I don't have a roommate. We have a cohabitant, her brother-in-law, who happens to do an enormous amount of work on here. I hope he's not listening because he's, then he's going to want some payment for it. Uh, he doesn't pay rent, but instead I don't have to mow the lawn. I don't have to pay somebody to mow the lawn. I don't have to pay somebody to do general maintenance. I don't have to pay somebody to, 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 to fix stuff. And so, I, like I said, I'm constantly looking for ways to get an edge and get ahead financially, and that's one of the, one of the ways that I found to do that. Um, this one is, I'm not going to call it uh, a budgeting rule. I'm going to call it a big purchase rule. And and I don't talk about this. I haven't talked about this before, but it's something I'd like you to consider because I think if you were actually were to follow it, it would be groundbreaking for your savings. I think that you would accumulate wealth at a faster rate than you ever could with traditional budgeting methods. And the rule is pretty simple. If you're going to make a big purchase, and big purchase, I'll leave that up to you to define, but let's just say it's you know, one paycheck. So two weeks of pay or one week of pay or whatever, maybe call it a month of pay. If you're going to make a purchase, that's, that's more than that. So let's say your thing is photography. Allie likes photography. Allie likes, wants to buy a new camera. And let's say that camera costs $1,200. My advice to Allie would be, if you're going to buy a new Canon camera, maybe what you want to think about is before you can spend $1,200 on a camera, you have to buy $1,200 worth of Canon stock. And so every time you made a big purchase, you have to buy a proportionate investment 
It doesn't have to be in the company's stock, although I think that's a kind of a fun, interesting concept, right? Because usually people don't buy products from bad companies, right? Usually if you're buying a product, and especially if it's a big purchase, you've probably done a lot of research on it because it's a big purchase and you want to spend your money wisely. Um, and so not a lot of bad companies issue good products, if that makes sense. And not a lot of bad products are issued by good companies. So I, I don't, I'm not saying you necessarily need to buy the stock of the exact company that you're buying the product from. But if you were going to say, I'm going to buy a camera or I'm going to buy a new mountain bike. And so now I have to buy a thousand dollars of the S and P 500 index fund, uh, before I'll let myself buy a thousand dollars of stock. Can you imagine the money you'd accumulate? Because, and, and can you imagine how much more responsible you'd be on those big purchases? Because it really makes you think about it, right? Like who's excited, as excited to invest as they are to finally get the product of their hobby, right? Like if your hobby's hunting and you want to buy a new bow and arrow or, or biking or photography or whatever it may be, you usually get pretty excited about that product, right? You, you research it and you're really ready to use it. And then when you get it, you're super excited to open it up and you know, take it outside and use it or whatever. Imagine if we got that excited about like, I just can't wait to save another thousand dollars so I can buy another share of Google, right? Like if that was our mentality, we would save so much more money. And there's this very small subset of people that do get excited about that. They get really excited about, you know, I, I actually get excited for the month end because the way in which I save is I have a set amount I keep in my checking account at the and at the end of the month. If it's above that, I move it to the savings account. And once my savings account's above a certain amount, I move it to my brokerage account. So I actually do get excited. I get excited for the end of the month because I want to see how much is left in my checking and how much I get to save. I do get excited about that, but not as excited as I would be about buying like a new dirt bike. That's way more fun, right? And so I, I think it'd be an amazing purchase rule. I think you'd have to have a spouse in order to keep yourself honest about it, unless you're going to talk about money. You got to talk about money more often that I almost added that to the list. So I'm just going to touch on it real quick. We don't talk about money enough, which is why we have poor money habits, right? Like if you were to share your credit card balance on your phone at like with your friends at dinner all the time, and you guys met for dinner weekly, would you be more or less inclined to get that number down? Right? Like you'd be more inclined. You don't want to show your friends that you carry 15,000 in credit card debt at all times. Right. You'd be like, you like want to show up to dinner and be like, look at this bitches. I got zero on my card. Right. That's what you want to do. And so I think if we were to talk about money and destigmatize it some that we probably have better money habits. So maybe, maybe join an investment club, maybe join a, a personal finance forum where you can share ideas and concepts and, and stories and, and talk with your friends and peers about money. Because if you talk about money more, you'll probably be more conscious of it. So this next thing, I'm going to call this the consumer convenience spending conundrum. And I've given this a lot of thought. I don't know why it keeps popping up in my head. Is, is it's just too damn easy to spend money, right? Like I go to open an app and download a new app and I have an Android and Google Pay is on there. So they have my cards information saved and it'll be like a paid app. And it's like, it gets 99% of the download process. And it's like, right, do you want it the free version or the commercial free version at $1.99? It's like, it's two bucks, right? Like, I don't want to sit here and swipe around commercials. I'll buy the damn thing for two bucks, right? Or, um, you know, Amazon. Amazon kills me. It kills me and my wife. Or my wife kills me via Amazon. The, the, the buy now button, right? Like where you don't have to go to the cart and all that, where you just hit buy now and then swipe and the shit's at your door the next day or the day after, that is way too easy to spend money. It's way too easy to spend money now. Uh, it's just, the, it's the consumer convenience spending conundrum. So here's my advice on this. And this is, I, you know, it's like I said, some of this stuff is big life-changing stuff is like literally take the time to go through your phone, remove all your saved credit card information, unsave your credit card from Amazon, make yourself help self have to type that shit in every single time you make a purchase. So you stop spending money. And then I want you to do is take your, uh, your checking account and automate an investment, automatic, automatic auto invest every single two weeks for you pick the number, 100, 200, 300, 500, 1000 dollars into an investment account that just buys the S and P 500. That's 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 if you were to do that and compare what you've saved over the previous three months over what you're going to do over the next three months, you would be shocked at the difference. You probably wouldn't be shocked, you know, it, but 
you could probably understand the math behind that is it's dramatic. It's too easy to spend money, so make it easier on yourself to save money. That's my advice there is just just make it harder on yourself to spend money. Just do it. So I've been pretty impressed with this beer. I think this episode went better than I anticipated it would, um, <laughs> but I am biased. I hope you enjoyed this week's of Prosperity by the Pint. I wanted to remind you we got some hats coming out. They were voted on by you as listeners uh, on our Facebook page. It's a Navy hat. I was disappointed it wasn't the camo one, but hey, you win some, you lose some. Uh, so let us know if you want to purchase one of those hats. We'll get some pricing up on the Facebook page before too long. And thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, wherever you listen. That's where we are. Cheers. Cheers.